Welcome to episode four of A Bike and a Beer, a show where I talk about a vintage motorcycle while drinking an appropriately paired beer. We do these every Saturday, so if you like what you see, be sure to subscribe. It really helps the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about a bike that's near and dear to my heart. It's a 1966 Triumph Mountain Cub, and the beer we're going to be drinking is a... You ready for this? It's a Coors Light. Now I know, you might be thinking, a Coors Light? This bike deserves better than a Coors Light. But hear me out, okay? This is a Blue Mountain beer, and this is a Blue Mountain Cub. Plus, I mean, this bike was built for the working man. And what better beer to represent that than a Coors Light? So let's pop it open, give it a swig. I do that every time, oh man. Nice and refreshing on a 103 degree day. If you need me to tell you what a Coors Light tastes like, well, I don't know what to tell you. Triumph Cubs are one of my absolute favorite vintage motorcycles. They're cool, they're stylish, they're capable, they're affordable, and they are so fun. They also have a really rich history. So, let's go back. 1952, we start out with a, a really revolutionary bike from Triumph called the Terrier. And the Terrier was a 150cc version of this, um, but it was revolutionary for two reasons. One, it was the very first unit construction for Triumph. And if you don't know what that means, before then, the motors and the transmissions were separate. And so with the Terrier, the motor and the transmission were mated by the same casing so that was highly revolutionary they also had the first uh, example of plunger rear suspension so very revolutionary bike and of course Edward Turner designed it so it was very very stylish and it sold really well so the Terrier does great but it needs a little more power to be a little more roadworthy so in 54 the Triumph Tiger Cub gets released it's a 200cc version, it's got a dual seat instead of a single seat, and it also did really, really well in sales. Now just two years after that, three custom-made Triumph Tiger Cubs went to the ISDT. Ken Haynes rode one of them, and it was highly modified. As I mentioned, there was three bikes. They actually had to make them 175cc bikes because there was no 200cc class and there was a custom rear subframe that they made with a swinging arm and dual shocks. It's a phenomenal story. I'm gonna put a, a link to um, an amazing website that, that lines it all out. It's a really good story. He ends up getting a gold medal with some cringe-worthy um, trail side repairs and it's just a great story. I highly recommend visiting their website. I also used a lot of the photos from that website for this production so thank you for that um, tigercubinterior.com. If you have an awesome Triumph Tiger Cub story please leave it in the comments. I would love to hear it. So in the late 50s and early 60s they released a number of different Triumph uh, Tiger Cubs. Trials models, really uh, low production scramblers, but in 64, the US dealers were reaching out to Triumph and be like, hey, we need a more serious dirt bike. What do you got for us? And this is what they had for them, the Mountain Cub. So they made the Mountain Cub in 64, 64 to 67. 
came with Dunlop trials tires, alloy fenders, and uh, more ground clearance with beefier front forks. They're very, very capable bikes. They're incredibly fun to ride. You can have fun riding circles in your driveway or on your small property like we do here. Bruce Brown, the famous uh, producer of the best motorcycle movie ever made on any Sunday, um, he bought a Triumph Mountain Cub in 67 and he absolutely loved that bike. This is my bike. I don't plan on selling it because I love it so much. I rode it for a while just as is and enjoyed it. I decided I wanted to make it to a mild trials build and do some events with it. So that's what I did. The Mountain Cubs have wide ratio gearboxes and I knew I wanted to put a smaller front sprocket on, basically the smallest I could get. You have to split the cases on this motor in order to change the front sprocket. So I had to take the motor apart. While I was in there, everything was looking a little bit tired. So it was a pretty easy decision to decide to rebuild the whole motor. So this has a brand new piston, fresh bore and hone, uh, new bearings. I put a new clutch in it and um, I put an Electrics World uh, ignition kit in it, which I absolutely love. It's, um, it's a really, really high quality unit. The stator and the ignition trigger all exist um, in this side of the um, case. And there's actually nothing that is in the uh, original points housing. So it's a very simple, straightforward unit. There's a couple wires and then a really small CDI box that I just have mounted right under the seat here. This is a 19 inch alloy fender. I had this bracket kicking around. I think I took it off my 441 and modified it a bit. I made this number plate. There's a lot I could do to this bike. Okay, people go crazy with these Triumph Cubs for trials and I love those bikes, but I just wanted something that was a little better representative of what you would see rolling around in 66 um, at a trials event. These pegs, these are rear set pegs. Um, which, when you're doing trials, you want kind of the peg set back and down from stock. That allows you to keep the front end really light and maneuverable. I also put Amel style um, hand controls braking clutch lever. They have a really great feel to them compared to the Doherty levers. Webco handlebars, which I absolutely love. And then also the Amel T80 200 um, throttle tube. And those parts were all recommended to me by my good buddy Alan and also Matt from Speed and Sport. He sells parts and he helped me so much with this build. I called him, he put parts in the mail every day so that I could get this built for the 2021 Moto Fest at Laguna Seca. Um, I started tearing this motor apart a month before I went and I made it in time. So huge thanks to Matt on that. This seat is a Sammy Miller trial seat, which I actually had kicking around from another project. This is actually the color tank for 1964. 64 had crystal blue and silver sheen. 65 had hunting yellow and then 66 and 67 had grenadier red and alaskan white all right so i hope this video gets you fired up about triumph tiger cubs uh as i mentioned they're affordable they go anywhere from three to seven k for running complete bikes um, and you can get project bikes for under 2500 bucks so get on craigslist ebay whatever you like get a cub get into it it's super fun they're super addictive, and uh, I know you'll love it. All right, we'll be back next Saturday with another bike and another beer. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for subscribing. We appreciate it all. See you next week.